G'day, good evening, good morning to you, wherever you sit and listen. I hope you're doing well. Today is going to be interesting. We've got a good talk about, um, yeah, I'll put it up on the screen. Where is it? Uh, iron exchange capacity. So it's all to do with voltages in the soil and the exchanging of minerals and elements and the reducing of them. So it'll be pretty cool in your substrates. And the compost and everything would be good. First, this is a, a bit of a disclaimer just to say that this is a, a legal show that respects the law and I only promote organic practices. So it's all about sustainability and safe for the environment. So it can be happening down the track, ongoing and ongoing, these practices. Not just you have to remediate practices from putting stuff in like with, I'm not going to go into that. But that's what I'm about, and I promote the law too. So if you're into those illegal activities, sorry, can't help you, and I won't be promoting that type of stuff. So today, back to the cool stuff, which is iron exchange capacity. So I've got a lot of, I've prepared a lot of slides here to try and, because it's a, it's a detailed topic, and without a background, it's hard to, Grab a, gra grab a gasp of it. So I've tried to simplify it and to get the point across, I hope it works all right. Uh, g'day to chat too. Hello to FM. How you going? And Lene. Talk good morning to you, Lene. All right. Should I wait a little bit longer for a few people to write? No, I'm just going to start, get into it because there's, there's a lot of slides to go through. So if you've come late, sorry, should have been early or not early, but on time. Anyway, um, where are we going to go here? Share screen and get into it. Share screen. Hang on, just trying to get it all ready here. Entire screen, we can do it. Why not? This is going to be heaps of stuff. So first we'll start with the iron exchange capacity. So the iron exchange capacity is a combination of the two, anion, the two ions. So you've got your cation, which is your positive charges, and your anion, which is your negative charges. So between those two, that's your iron exchange capacity. And the interaction between an iron in solution and another iron in the boundary layer between that solution and the charged surface equals the exchange. So some sources of cations are clay minerals, organic matter, and amorphous minerals. And sources of anions are clay minerals, primarily the one-to-one -one clays, such as kyanolite, and metal oxides and amorphous minerals. So there's the ion exchange capacity. I might have to skim a bit of all this stuff because it's it's quite I've got a lot of slides to go through. Uh, the ion exchange. So you can see that's there. Cation exchange capacity is the total capacity of the soil to hold exchangeable cations and same with anions. The anion exchange capacity is the total available sum to hold anions. The magnitude of the cation exchange capacity in soils is usually greater than the anion exchange capacity, and soils lack the ability to retain anions because most colloids have a negative charge, and you need a positive and negative to match for it to retain on. And sulfite can leach readily and is no longer available to support plant growth as well. So here's a little diagram of how it happens. So you've got your soil solution here, and here's the negative charge soil particle and you've got to make it up with a positive things will positive things will stick to it so like your calcium your potassium your magnesium they all bond with it if they're in close proximity and then i'll go into technical i'm not going to explain much more just to keep it simple I'll just keep it flowing so this is a soil, a good soil solution which has a good amount of bonding sites so the cec is higher and over here, you can see the CC, the bonding sites is a lot lower. So this would be something that's not having a good cation exchange capacity. And you can see nothing's really held on. Everything's floating around. 
So if water was to come in proximity to this type of the soil, all these elements, nutritional elements would be washed away. And if one was water was to come into this type of the soil, you'd see a lot is held onto it. So that's to do with the cation exchange capacity and anion exchange. The cation exchange capacity of the soil is a measure of the quality of negatively charged sites on soils that can retain positive charged ions like calcium, magnesium, potassium, bioelectrostatic forces. Uh, cations retained electrostatically are easily exchanged with cations in the soil solution, so a higher CEC has a greater capacity to maintain adequate quantities of calcium, magnesium and potassium than soil with low CEC, like that chart just before showed. A soil with high CEC may not necessarily be more fertile because the soil CEC can also be occupied by acidic cations such as hydrogen and aluminium. However, when combined with other measures of soil fertility, CEC is a good indicator of soil quality and productivity. Cation exchange sites are found primarily on clay minerals and organic matter. Uh, that'll do. Soil CEC is normally expressed in one or two numerical equivalent sets of units, and it's an MEQ per 100 grams or it's milli equivalents of charge per 100 grams of dry soil. Or it can be also measured in centimoles per kilo. So if you've got a fair bit of it, you, um, you'll be measuring in centimoles per kilogram of dry soil. Determine to method, the methods of determining the CEC. So there's a few ways you can measure it. Uh, actually, these are pretty detailed. You need solutions to measure it. There's no real probe of the actually you can use the XA or XRF spectrometer, but in general, they're not, there's nothing to, it's hard. You need reactants to go through the stages measuring it. So it measures of determining. So I'm not really, really talk about the measuring it. Why do you use measuring? No. Thermodynamic of ion exchange. Uh, provides a relation the thermodynamic equation provides a relationship between exchange of phases activity coefficients and the exchange of phase co composition okay i've lost you here all right i'm going to get out of this calculating the soil cec from lab data no nope. ph and cec has a massive relationship between each other so generally cec increases with ph the permanent charges of two is to one, like in Montmorillonite clay or smegtite, have dependent charges, and also pH dependent charges of humus and allophane and some one to ones clays hold exchangeable ions. As the pH is raised, the negative charges on some one to one types of silicate clays, allomorphane, humus, and even iron aluminium oxides increase and CEC also increases. The alkaline, in alkaline condition though, CEC reflects the pH dependent charge as well as permanent ones. So this is summarizing, pH is related to CEC in general. If you've, it depends what mineral content is in there, if there's iron or aluminium, but in general it is related the exchangeable cations in the field soils, the exchangeable ions in the soils depend upon the climatic conditions. Oh, I should just read, hang on, I'll just pause for a second, I'll just read chat, see if there's anything going on. I'll come back to you. Better uh, keep up on that. Uh, cheers. Yeah, Jeff, how you going, Jeff? Dave, 969, g'day, mate. Poops, how are you, Mr. Poops? Tao, nice to see you. Pretty good topic today. I'm sure you guys will and girls will really like it. Jeff, cheers, Jeff. Poops. Poops got a question already. Uh, can you pour a 1,000 ppm solution in, catch runoff and figure out? Oh, for the sake of a seat cation exchange capacity? No, no you've got to do it. To do that, 
to test the CEC, you need to do, oh, where's the slide? Maybe I'll, I'll scroll back a few slides and to test the CEC poops. Um, it's a, element. Uh, you put in ammonium and you, then you've got to filter it out and then you've got to replace and see what exchanges and attaches onto it. Then you test the ammonium at the end and then it's the level that the CEC off a chart will do. So it's not a straightforward thing you can do with runoff, unfortunately. Mate, I really wish it would. Because <laughs> as you know, the, the cation exchange, it, um, it changes over a period of time once minerals are absorbed into the plants and because it's organic acids that comes out from its exudates from the plant's roots is protons and that's hydrogen, the H pluses, and that will um, decrease the soil pH. So it's, it does change over a while. Uh, yeah, so I hope I can, hope I'll, I'll show you a chart where, but later on, I'll try and do it actually right now, just so I remember about how to test it. There's uh, the beaker mode, you test it with, um, then at least later on, if you want to do it, you can get these minerals and test it yourself. Uh, or an XRF meter, which is rad, you just pull a trigger, mate. But they're at like 15 grand, but I'd still like to get one. Who else is here? Down under Fuller. Hello, down under Fuller. Hope you're doing well. What does Jeff say? Jeff Propelli says, does biochar in layers at different depths have effect on charging the ground? <sighs> well, yes, because it's to do with, we'll get to it later, as well as the um, oxygen content. So if there's not as much oxygen, that means that chances of getting good charges and turnover is lower. Because I'll go through some charts later with uh, oxygen and anoxygen, anox conditions. So you'll see through the aerobic and the aero and anaerobic conditions on what the relationship is with the charges. So back to the question, does biochar in layers at different depths have an effect on charging the ground? Yes. Blinky, good morning, Blinky. How are you? Oops, this is basically not an easy test, so not happening. Yes, that's right, mate. That's, yeah. Unfortunately, it's not easy. They haven't devised any cool way of doing it. But you can always keep it enriched from your soil organic matter. You know, if you, oh, sorry. But anyway, you'll have to put some soil organic matter. There's Can do like soil organic matter and some other stuff. Gobby Cannabis Vaporist, good morning to you. Gobby Sunshine Rainbows, how are you this morning? How's it going? Um, back to it. So I'm just, um, I hope I know what I'm up to. I got a lot of slides to show you. So I'm up to this one, exchangeable cations in the fields. And so the exchangeable exchangeable ions in the soils depend upon the climatic conditions. So iron and aluminium, complex aluminium hydroxyl ions and the H plus protons are most prevalent in humid regions. Calcium, magnesium and sodium dominate soil in low rainfalls. So in given soil, the proportion of cation exchange capacity satisfied by a particular cation is termed the saturation percentage of that cation. So if 50% of the CEC is saturated by calcium ions, the exchange complex is said to have a calcium saturation percentage of 50. So the terminology is especially useful in identifying the relative portions of sources of acidity and alkalinity in soils. This is a cool chart that shows you the properties of different types of clay loom and what they hold in different regions. So from warm regions, it goes to cool, semi-arid semi -arid regions and then into arid. So you can see the difference, how it greatly drops the cation exchange from the warms to the cools to semi-arid to arid regions. And that's the exchangeable minerals in most of them. So a lot of, uh, one, actually something goes up, doesn't it? Yeah, calcium goes up because it's, uh, yeah, your, 
arable soils, your calcium and what's the other mineral that's magnesium that's held up in the soils that are very alkaline, uh, those ones will increase. But in general, everything else goes down because it's, it's also pH dependent as well. And the CECs, see how the CECs goes up? Isn't that interesting? And the probable charges goes up, same thing, because it's pH dependent or pH related. So the non-acidic cation percentage or the percentage of CECs, you can see is summarized down the bottom here. So it's interesting that it's a cool chart just to basically summarize everything. So the cation saturation and nutrient availability is the percentage saturation of some ions and they're higher than those ions that will be easily and readily displaceable. So the strength of the absorption of the cations is a major factor because there's, there's an order. Actually, I can put this a chart here. I know there's a chart. Oh, I've got a chart somewhere. Yeah. The, the bonding strength, it starts off at the bottom with sodium being the weakest and then ammonium that goes up. So, and then potassium, magnesium, calcium, and aluminium being the highest. Meaning, so calcium, I'll just, so calcium, so potassium can easily be replaced by aluminium ions in acidic soils and it will be available for the plants. So remember the bonding, so this is the bonding strengths. So what that is saying that if you've got ammonium sitting there and you think, cool, I'm going to go and get a heap of nitrogen, cool, and it's just gone bound up all of these sites of this new freshly soil that you've made up and it's holding it there. But if you go and introduce calcium or magnesium or potassium, what, well, you won't introduce aluminium because it's a metal that you don't really want to introduce. But if you introduce calcium, magnesium or potassium through an already existing ammonium site, that it'll just bump it out of the way bump it off and take its position and it'll make the ammonium, it'll just float readily until it's picked up by something else in an exchange. Uh, so there is also some nutrient antique, uh, sometimes high potassium levels are known to limit the uptake of magnesium, even when significant quantities of magnesium are present in the soil. So the half, so this is a good little cartoon and showing you what's going on. Uh, I'm going to interpret it first. So root exudates having, so this is a, a radical from coming out from a root. So a root tip coming out there and it's putting out its exudates and the exudates is this organic acid or the H plus ions. And that's going to exchange with other minerals that it needs. So it'll put it out and then all of a sudden there's a sodium sitting here and then it'll just bump it in and it'll take it out and that's the exchange that, that's happened. Tightly held complementary ions with small oscillations rather than large ones. Right, that's what I go. The root will take up cations from the soil in exchange of its H plus ions. In the left figure, the loosely held sodium will easily be taken up by the plant. In the right figure, the potassium will easily be taken up by the plant. I go, that's sort of what I explained. N ion absorption mechanisms, N ion absorption mechanisms. Um, I'm going to go into that. It's a bit heavily. Here's a good chart of the soil pH in relation to the IEC. So up top, you've got your cation exchange capacity. Bottom is anion. Right down on the x-axis is your, your soil pH, four, five, six, seven. And on the left is its centimoles strength. So you can see as the soil pH increases, anion goes down and cation goes up as characteristics of ion exchange involves electrostatic interactions between counter ions in the boundary layer between a solution and the charged particle surface of counter ions in a diffused cloud layer around charged particles. This comes into a bit of a reduction oxidation layer thing can come into this as well, which I'll get to at the end. I'll be talking about radox later on the oxygen reduction potential. It is, so the characteristics of ion exchange is usually rapid, diffuse, controlled, reversible, and stoichiometric in nature. And in most cases, there is some selectivity of one ion over another ion by the exchanging surface, just by that bonding strength talked about before. And 
Uh, and exchange reversibility is indicated when the exchange isotherms for the forward and backwards exchange reactions coincide. Okay, we'll get on with this. Characteristics, the stoichiometry effect um, means that any ions that leave the colloid surface are replaced by an equivalent amount of other ions. Uh, an example would be, uh, so if ions, well, if ions have a different valence, then the higher charged ion will be preferred. Like if aluminium's there, it'll be preferred higher like that summary before how I told you about if ammonium's down the lowest, it can be bumped off easier with potassium, magnesium, calcium. Characteristics of ion exchange. Uh, so in examining the effect of the valency, which is this, like the strength before, so the selectivity and pol polaris polarism must be considered. The polarism is the distortion of an electron cloud about an anion by a cation. So decrease, so here's its size, and as it matures, its, its shape changes. So its bonding strength will change too, as you can see over here. Um, selectivity sequence, no, definitely not getting into that. CEC of different soils. This is a cool chart. Actually, I should get back into um, a reading some questions. I'll just pause on this bit. Can I pause and bring it up too? I should be able to, eh? Oh, I can't. All right, I'll just get off that and then read the chat to see if there's any interesting stuff, then we can get back to that one. Uh, g'day, g'day, that's where I was up to. Firing that gets the way. Supreme Grape, morning to you, Supreme Grape. Sunshine, Critter, good morning to you, Critter. Martial artist, I can press the clicker. Sweet, I caught you live. Hello, martial artist, nice to see you. Sure, bro. Hey, brother, top of the morning to you. That's the way. Um, yeah, for those latecomers, it's a ion exchange capacity so it's all to do today with the cation exchange and anion exchange and the reduction potential of voltages in soils so it's why minerals are cycled through soils and how they exchange it with plants that's the guts of what's going on today what's trying to be explained not too bad just reading through the thing uh Morning, lads. That's about it, eh? Likewise, Zaya. How are you, Zaya? Nice to see ya. Smash the like. Very good. Uh, righto. Okay, back to it. Back to sharing. Martial artist. Very good. Share screen. Allow. There's so many slides to go through. So the CEC of different types of soils. So you can see your soil humus up here has a massive capacity to hold cations. It's really, really strong. So if you, the more you can get your humus into the ground, it um, yeah, can benefit heaps. Because the soil break, the reason why is because the humus is the end, of the end result of the compost and it has a lot of negative charged colloids sitting there, minerals. So things can easily attach to it. So that's why it has a very high uh, CC rate. Vermiculites, I'll go into a bit of this later on about the different types of clays, why finished compost is right down here. So it's different from humus because humus is the end result of finished compost. Finished compost is still has a lot of chunk into it where soil humus is the mostly liquidy, sort of blacky, darky stuff. Well, depends, remember, I, was, if you might listen, but I was talking about, did a talk on humus a few weeks ago. The different the fulvic acid, humic acid, and the human H U M I N that's um, involved in it. Kernelite clays it goes right down to sandy loam and sand. It holds virtually it holds nothing. Uh, that'll do for that chart. At higher pHs, uh, no, I just summarised it before. C C of secondary soils. Uh, this is all. These are clay. They're all clay soils. So it's, then you've got to know which clay you want. So I'm not going into that CC of secondary soils. 
Kion light, it's clay again. It's a one is to one. So it'll only be bonded on the outside, as you can see here. There's an outside layer. Hydrogen bonding in the center, only on the outside. Structure of vermiculite. Vermiculite is very high. It has one of the highest of all the clays in the cation exchange capacity. Nutrient rich. <laughs> um, I'm just going to skim through all these, I think, because you don't need to know why all this stuff's in here and how it goes in and how it does its isomorphic substitution. Well, I sort of touched on the isomorphic substitution before. Here it is here, isomorphic substitution. Um, it, that means that that's when the exchange happens. So it's as an internal layer as well as an external layer, like this illite, and a isomorphic substitution can happen. So mostly potassium is bound up in this inside this layer here, and but you can exchange it with other things. So clay is always a good source, rich source of potassium. All right, no, nope, I've exchanged, I've gone through isomorphic. Don't need to know that. Estimating CCs and clay mineralogy. No, we're not going to touch on that one. Base percentage saturation. Nope. Effects of colloid charge. Kind of went through that before. This is uh, just shows the soil pH on the x axis and the amount of CEC on the y axis here. So it just shows the clay, like clay is low. But if you got up here with your spec type, or your might really like clay, it's um, 80. And then humus, which is the highest, which ranges from 100 centimoles per kilo in 4 pH up to 200, 200 odd in a neutral pH. CC implications. So the higher the CC, the more clay or organic matter is present in the soil. And that usually means you're gonna end up with a high CC in general. And that's going to allow for greater water holding capacity and better exchange of the minerals. But a low CEC is more likely to develop potassium and magnesium deficiencies, while high CEC soils are less susceptible. This is it's not this is to do with soils, but it does say soils in general. But you could have mineral exchanges in other substrates if you have these elements if they exist there. So it's um, if you have cocoa, for instance, you, straight cocoa, you're going to get a low CEC more than likely. But if you introduce a bit of organic matter into your cocoa, that's going to change things a lot. So you wouldn't really call that soil, but it's still a medium that could have a good cation exchange capacity. Um, all right, that'll do. The lower the CEC, the faster the soil pH will decrease in time as well. So sandy soils need to be more limited more often than clay soils. And the higher CEC, the larger quality of lime, quantity, sorry, of lime that you need to increase the soil pH because it's going to reduce a lot. So sandy soils need less lime than clays because they won't change much. No, I'm not going to go through any problems on how to work it out. You need to know... So poops, you need to know some centimole um, equivalents before you could put them into this table. There you go, down the bottom here. So there's some centimole equivalents. You need to know those numbers to put them into the equation. And finally, mate, well, you could go and get an XRF meter and pull the button on it and it'll tell you what CEC you got. Those XRF meters are, just look on it, portable XRF meter under your favorite site you buy things from and you'll come up and you'll see a thousand dollar mark and you go wow but then you'll read what that does and you'll also go wow because you can tell individual elements and charges all sorts it doesn't do soil organic matter unfortunately because you need a different spectrometer to do the soil organic matter but that's about its only downside it can do so much and i really really would i kind of need one i suppose because then i can give more definitive answers on what happens in relation to medical cannabis. So we're not going to go through that. Numerical problems. No, nope. because see down here, the mass of one mole. So they've got different masses of like atomic weight, molecular weights. So that also goes into the equation. Yes, yeah, technical, isn't it? I'd rather pull a button. 
All right, I'm not going to go through all those sums. This is really good, but this is a, a nice schematic of CC in action over with, clay, with clay. So on the left, you see a CC having a, an amount of 25 milli equivalents, and on the right, it's only got five. So you can see on the left, there's more clay, more portions to hold the cations, and on the right, there's a low clay content, so there's fewer portions to hold cations. Uh, so that's a good summary, I suppose. I don't have to explain it anymore, I don't think. Go down here, some practical applications. I think you already understand the practical applications because it's all about nutrient holding and nutrient, nutrient exchange. Problems, no. Cation exchange equivalent uh, equilibrium. <laughs> yeah. Other equations, coefficients. All right, it's the end of one chart. Yay. Look how many we've got to go. Not yay, you say, but still, this is what it's here for. So I'll stop that and see if there's any questions or anything. Any stuff like that. And then we'll get back to it. Smash the button, martial artist. Martial artist, was, yeah, he's a good old fella. I haven't spoken to him for many years. Martial artist, Poots is old school, yes. <laughs> Jeff, Shabro, martial artist, Jeff. Person, train crews, waving, trophying, smiling. Yeah. All good, happy chat. Nice to see everybody chatting happily. No questions, though. That's good. Thank you. All right. Back to it so we'll get on to the next little bit so that would have been through one that's one lot of slides now we've got all these other lots of slides to go through so that's this first one done I don't know which order it was I'll start from the start ah oh, there's two types of charges in soil colludes that you can get for your cation exchange there's constant or permanent charges so a constant charge or a permanent charge would be an isomorphic substitution through clay or a dependent or variable charge is a second type and that happens through charge dependence with pH solution. The constant charges arise due to isomorphic substitution, RAD, we've sort of covered that in very brief, but they're not dependent on pH. So the isomorphic substitution replaces a cation by another cation of the similar size depends on the type and abundance of cations common in twos to one clays. Negative charges arises when a lower charge cation replaces a higher charge cation. An example would be if aluminium replaces magnesium in the octahedral sheets. And if silica replaces aluminium in tetrahedral sheets in the fine grain mica. Uh, there's examples on how it's done. I don't think you want to go, need to go into that much detail. Positive charge arises when a higher charge cation replaces a lower charge one. And a variable dependent charge is mainly found in the one-to-one -one clays like cleonolite and humus because exchangeable sites occur in external surfaces only. They're not held inside like is the tools to one clays. So they vary a lot. In other words, in those, because if they're bound inside, like in the two is to one smegtite and mineralite in those clays, that means they're in that layer, the boundary layer inside, and it's hard for the exchange to happen. So variable charges may give rise to both positive and negative charges, and, it, and a charge depends on pH solution. So it's a variable charge, how it happens. Yes, charges in various clays. So charge characteristics represent colludes showing comparable levels of permanent pH dependent charges as well as pH positive charges, negative and positive charges. This shows the total in this chart here. And here is the, this is the negative charge for these three. And here's the positive charge on the right. So this is the total negative charge. It's constant percentage and it's pH dependent, how percent, how dependent it is upon pH. Oh, that's organic, so you can see the organic, um, soil organic matter would be at the top, 
and then you've got your two is to ones as you go down, then your one is to ones as you go down. Relationship between soil pH and charges is quite, I've gone on about that the whole time. So you can see on this chart on how it is dependent upon it. So as the cation exchange capacity increases, the soil pH increases. And as the anion exchange capacity decreases, the soil pH decreases. So in acid rich one is to one clay soils of like tropical regions, positive charges are more abundant. Whereas negative charges predominate in two is to one in temperate regions. Negatively charged clay, clay is attracts to positive terminals demonstrating its negative charge. So you can do it here with a little nine volt battery, open up a little, uh, well, those paper clips and put some protective layers on it so you don't get shocked between the two volt two probes. Put it in the water and you'll see little things start attaching to it if you put clay in the water. That's proving it's CEC and a AEC. So absorption of cations and anions. Absorption is that by adhesion of gases or ions or atoms to a surface. Remember this adsorption, which is AD, is which means on the surface, and AB, absorption, means inside of it. So I'm talking about AD on the surface of it. So this would be more in the one as to one types of clays and the organic matter. So absorption of cations and ions may be physical or chemical. It can be charged. And two types of formations aid in absorption, outer and inner sphere complex. Uh, I don't want to go on. This is... It gets, see, this is going to talk about outer and inner sphere complex of ions. So it gets really, really, you're going to zoom right in and you're talking about atoms. So there's an atom, oxygen atom, there's an aluminium atom, there's a hydroxyl atom, the OH negative. So there's, um, it's, it just gets technical. That's why I'm not going to explain all that. And I don't think you really want to know. This is a basic overview of why CC and AEC is good for, to maintain it in your substrates. This chart shows the amount and type of cations absorbs the effects of the soil and plant nutrition and what the, what the effects are on it. So most of these are related to metals and then it just shows the different types of toxicities that you're going to get from these cations in plants. I'm not going to go through them because it's a massive list as you can see, it's like 20 or 30 there. Cation exchange capacity is expressed. I've already been through that. Oh, this is it. This is uh, soil chemistry. This is the slides from this class. These are quite technical. I'm going to try and skim through them just to save all of the head mess. Buffering CC. You can buffer the soil with CC. Um, this pH of, this, of the buffer is more than the pH of the na native soil than these methods. Uh, methods, actually I'm not gonna, that'll go a bit technical. This is like testing of it. Here we go, Poots, you still there mate? This is the, the, the chart that I, the slide I wanted to show you. So determining the CC. So this is how to measure it. So you need your ammonium salt solution and you'll pour it through and then you've got your soil solution here. It pours through and exchanges. And then your ammonium's in here you pour through again, it exchanges. Then you put potassium through and then it exchanges. So you, by that valency level, by the bonding strength before, you can see which one's bonded and which one hasn't. So you'll know when you'll do this last test of pouring potassium through and getting ammonium at the end, you'll see what how much ammonium's left in there. You'll test the ammonium level and then that will determine the CEC. That's the simplest way to do it without pulling on the trigger of your XRF meter. Calculating the soil CEC from lab data, no. No, CEC in soils, I've shown that cool chart. Summary of the different soils that holds the different capacities. Estimating pH in soils, actually is that, yeah, generally CEC increases with pH. Yeah, sort of covered this actually. Exchangeable cations in the field. Yep, it's covered that. Cation saturation and nutrient availability. That's what this whole 
discussions about the influence influence of complementary cations. So this is the strength. This is my, where it have the, the, the bonding strength chart. No. Have I been through these? AEC generally decreases with increase of pH. No, because I don't remember, we haven't seen this one yet. The weathering of NCEC and AEC levels. So that's how soils made by weathering. It's mostly through wind and water erosion. And actually, do you know it takes a million years to make for weathering of to make one gram of soil? A million years. So it's so important to protect your soil and you can recharge your soil. Those people that throw it away, well, it took a million years to make one gram of that uh, fertile soil and they've just gone and taken the nutrients out of it. You can recharge it most definitely, most definitely. Weathering, so what's this chart show? It's that the increasing on the x-axis, mild, intermediate and strong relationships between CEC and AEC and this must be the cent yeah, the charges per kilo. So you can see here's a zero or the neutral charge. So it's a high cation exchange and as the pH goes up, no, no, this is opposite because the cation exchange, so as pH is going down. So this is to show weathering. I don't know how to interpret this for you. Mostly two is to one place. This is like the opposite of all those charts that we've been showing. That's really about that I've been showing. Importance of absorption of pesticides and no, we're not, well, it has to do, soils can absorb charged ions by a, it's, it's to do with their positions. But I don't want to go into heavily detail and bore you with it. Uh, the CEC dub has an effect because these, the pesticides, they put out molecules that they're called organopestis, organoclase, that's what they'll form afterwards is when the pesticide will bond with the clay and it's formed an organoclay and then it's like polluted. Examples of absorption, just distribution of coefficients, don't want to know all that. Binding of biomolecules to clay and soil. Clay and humus is quite strong. So the biomolecule cannot be easily removed by washing or exchangeable reactions. The initial attraction may be between charged colloid surfaces and positive or negatively charged functional groups. All right, that'll do. No, we're getting a bit off the track here. Uh, right, next next chart. Uh, actually, I'll stop there and see if there's any questions. And then otherwise, I'll get back into the next um, little bit that I'll show on. Um, 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 going up just to read the chat to see if there's anything in here. Uh, it was up to there. Oops, likewise. Thanks, Saya. Smash the like button. CC just cruising down. Nutrient rich equals silica. So, sunshine. I don't know what that's referred to, but nutrients remember, nutrient rich is um, nutrients is 17 of. Uh, essential elements that make up for the plant. So it's one of those, 17 of those, and they want to be available as well. Uh, oh, yeah, we've seen what I was up to. Not much at all. Very good. All right, back to it. Slides. So I haven't done CEC yet. I'm um, sorry, the radox potential. All right, I'll get back to sharing. So I can get through all this. 44 minutes. Far out. I'm gonna have to skim a few because I, I think I'm only halfway done. Got stacks to go through. That one was done. Oh, that's right. The first one was done. Good. Second, how soil retains nutrients. The cation exchange capacity of a soil is. I'm not going to read that because it's we've been back through it. Cations can attach to these sites and detach again in the exchange for other cations. That's how its nutrients are cycled. Here is a chart that shows the cycling in action. So there's the root hairs, similar to those other schematics before, but this is showing the little the lateral roots that have come out. And you can see that the mineral, the exudates come out from the roots and it puts out the protons. 
and then in exchange it will exchange them and try and take up some of these calcium magnesium potassium and hopefully not too many aluminiums because you don't want you know them bound up and you get all the toxicities and you saw it in your plants that's yeah in general how it happens i suppose how Cations retained electrostatically are easily exchangeable with cations in the soil solution. So soil with a higher CC has a greater capacity to maintain adequate quantities of calcium, magnesium, potassium than other low CCs. I'm going to skim it. Cation exchange sites are found primarily on clay minerals and organic matter surfaces. So that's why if you have your... Uh, Hydro balls or just your cocoa, you can always add organic matter to increase your exchange and retention of nutrients. Soil organic matter will develop a greater CC at near neutral pH than under acidic conditions or pH dependent CC, that can be called. Thus, addition of an organic material will likely increase a soil CT over time. On the other hand, a soil CC can decrease with time through natural or fertilised induced acidification or organic matter decomposing. Because remember that's adding all of the H plus ions to it and then that's the measure. pH in the soil is the negative logarithm of, of these atoms. So if it's increasing these atoms, it's going to increase the acidity, lowering the pH. The anion exchange capacity is the sum of the total exchange of anions in the soil. The magnitude of CC, I'm, I'm going over this again, but it'll probably drum in the point, but this is another course uh, that would have, I think this one's to be honest, is the soil chemistry, just going into a bit more detail about it. But um, yeah, sorry, I'm doing my best. Um, Soils, when lacking the ability to retain anions, nitrate, sulfate can leach readily and it's not longer available to support plant growth. So the exchangeable cations in the field depend upon climatic conditions as well. Uh, so iron and aluminium, complex hydro ions and protons or H plus ions are most prevalent in humid regions. Sort of went through this before. Calcium, magnesium, and sodium dominant in the low rainfall or the alkaline regions. So, given soil, 50% covered that. Here's the bonding strength. This is the chart I was trying to get to. So, this is a rad chart which summarizes all that stuff I was getting to before. It's probably why this course was written in uh, 2022, this soil chemistry one. No. No, soil fertility was 2022. Sorry, this was 2021, but it was still pretty recent. So you can see here, it's just easily explained. If you've got pneumonium sitting there and potassium or magnesium, all these things above it want come close to it, it'll just bump it out of the way because of its valency of its bonding strength. If two cations are present in the soil of already one of the bonds must strongly be absorbed and it'll bump the other one off. The other will be leached out. Weekly how cations are readily available for plant uptake. Chelation. Chelation. Well, chela means claw in Latin, so it means hold on to. So when you're holding on to it or putting a ring complex, see it like right there, the ring complex around it, it holds on to it and makes it bound and it makes it more available. Chelation increases the availability of nutrients to plants. In soil, chelated minerals are absorbed more rapidly by both plants' roots and leaves. And this faster nutrient transfer results in accelerated growth. That's why all on the sides of the packets, you'll see, oh, it's chelation, it's chelation, because they've tried to um, bond it with that ring complex with other nutrients. Although chelated nutrients may not be immediately available, they are mobile and can quickly convert to plant available forms near the root surface, near the rhizosphere. It's kind of how it happens. It just bonds with other elements and it chelates, putting a ring around it. So this just shows a ethylandiamine ligand chelating to a metal with two bonds. Chink, chink. Uh, 
here's a chelation process with iron. So you can see if it's not chelated, it can be evaporated, all these losses, biodegraded, it can be non-specific chelated, it can be ad absorbed by something else or leached, or it can be the cation can be displaced. So if you've got the root, uh, how can I explain this? Root uptakes the iron, and then it's how can I say it? this is related to chelation? What's it chelated to? Well, it's got a metal particle there. It's the EDTH is the main thing it's chelated with. Uh, it's just chelated with this EDTH. Then you're going to say, what's the EDTH? And I'm going to have to explain that detailed thing. Sorry. That's a schematic of the chelation with EDTH. It's a um, substance that's used. I don't know how to explain that one. I'm not that familiar with EDTH. I can't really remember, and I don't want to say it just in case I'm wrong. So I'd rather just, just my, I'd rather say stuff that I know is correct. So it's when you everything's fact checked, you can all just be okay. It's true. So I'm not going to go into EDTH. Two mechanisms of nutrient uptake. Well, it's diffusion and mass flow. There's two ways that nutrient uptake can happen with the exchange. Uh, there's the mass flow. Um, I don't want to get off the topic. That's why I'm just trying to skim through it because I could just talk for hours on this, as you can see. Nutrient uptake by plants. Nutrient ions must be dissolved in soil water or soil solution by plants. They move from soil solution to vascular centres of the plant, passing through at one at least one cell membrane, the skin that holds the cell's liquids inside. The movement across the cell's membranes, passive or active. Oh, geez, this is going into detail. Yeah, because there's a few, there's three ways you can get through. It goes through the plasmodus mater, or it can go through the uh, phytos, no, the uh, outside of the cell, which is, what's that membrane called? Nutrient movement through the roots. How's this related to CC? I'm going to stay on topic. Immobile nutrients, mobile nutrients. Nutrient uptake is dependent on energy relationships. Yeah, okay, what's next? Passive and active. Oh, gee whiz. Uh, I don't know if you want to hear this. I'm going to stop there, I think. You just don't want to go into that much detail. I don't think that's another probably show. I'm going to read up. I'll just read back on some of the comments and then get back into it because still got a fair few to sh fair few slides to share that's for sure um Zaya, banana farmer how you going banana farmer i like the way you work it no dig it tea you just bag it up bag it up <laughs> well said hey supreme great how's it going mate one bad organics nice to see you uh jeff Papalia. okay cruising down no real questions Wombat eats roots and leaves. <laughs> Ned Kelly, nice to see you, Ned Kelly. Nexus, nice to see you, Nexus. Um, good day, good day. All right, that's about it. Back to it. I'll get back and keep sharing. Look at that, nearly an hour, and I reckon I'm only three quarters of the way through, and I'm trying to skim through stuff. It's not very good, actually. Oh, no, which one was up to? This one. Oh, that's right. I'm not going to talk about that. That one's done. This one. Already shown that before. Yep, already shown that one. Thank you, Brad. Ah, oh, reducing, eh? Well, let's go back to find where the reducing the redox was. I think it was this one. Right back at the start. There's just one chart that shows about so that's it for the C for the IEC. So the the cation exchange and NI exchange has been completed because I've got no more slides. Actually, there is one more down here. I'm going to conclude the CEC and AEC by saying that C this is showing in humus, clay, sand, and how it leaches out and how to improve it. So I'm just going to read these out because it's a good summary of it. I thought. So humus within humus, CEC varies according to the type of the soil. With, if it's a solid humus, you know it's got a high CEC from those charts that I showed before. 
and it has this high CC of all organic matter. Uh, having a neat humus has a CC two to five times greater than monoamide clay, 30 times greater than cleanolite. With clay, this depends on the different types of clay, as it's to one is to one, which is a lower, or the two is to one, which is a higher ratio of CC. Sand has no capacity to exchange cations because it has no electrical charge. This means sandy soils, such as podzolic topsoils, have low CC, but this can be approved by adding soil organic by adding organic matter. Organic matter meaning manures, green manures, leaves, all that sort of stuff to improve biology, get it cycling, start it happening. So you can recharge. If you've got a soil paddock with a um, testing a pH of uh, nine even, you can just start by doing this. You can also do, I'm not going to talk about, oh, you know, obviously you put your gypsum on to reduce it as well that adds minerals back in to start the cycling happening but organic matter is a prim, primo way to easily do it through manuring leaching if a soil has a low cc and high sodium levels up to half the cations in the soil may in the water and lost and not actually held by particles so these cations are very susceptible to being leached and and drained away in soil water so if you're using a substrate with no cation exchange capacity, like in uh, hydrogen or solidly only, uh, what's it, not peat, what's that other stuff they use? What's it? Yeah, so many people are saying it. That stuff, yeah, but it's on tip my tongue. If you're using your cocoa with a low CC, leaching is a high chance. So that's why you'll see deficiencies faster because the buffering capacity is lower because you don't have anything to maintain to hold on to things. Soils with a high CC have a much greater percentage of cations in the soil water, so are far less susceptible to nutrient loss by leaching. So how to improve your CC? You want to put in more organic matter, really, and raise the... Oh, or I'll just read what they say. You can improve CC in weathered soils by adding lime and raising the pH. Well, that's only in a low pH. If you've got a um, – and raising – that only affects – I'll just summarise. That's not – should be added to it. That's only for a pH of sort of 5 or below or 6 below because otherwise if you're going to raise it, yeah, you will improve the CC as we saw on the charts before, but you'll be taking it into the alkaline position too much. So it's, you want to buffer it, bring it back and hold it there. Uh, I'll keep reading what they say. Otherwise, adding organic matter. Yes. I'll just highlight that bit because it's organic matter is the organics. It's, it's, it's just rad. It's cycling. It's um, as the earth wanted. It's sustainable. Adding organic matter is the most effective way of improving the CC in your soil. This can be done with permanent pasture regular slashing, green manure crops, leaving crops stubbles to rot, rotating crops or pastures, and the addition of mulch and manure. Those are things that are extremely important, those things. Those, they're just so important because the mulch is going to protect the underneath and break down, holding the CC, and manure is going to be allowing all the cycling to happen because of all the good microbes and the uh, humic factor and all of the actions that it can start and keep up. Okay, that'll do for that one. All right, now I can get onto Radox. All right, I'll just go up and see if there's any questions again. Uh, Stony Creek, hello Stony Creek. Nice to see you. Are you good next? Okay, count me in, Jeff. Having a battle, all right, it's no good. Appropriate, Renee. All right, back to it. So no real questions, just some nice chat within everybody else. Thank you for being polite with each other and myself and the community. That's what I, there's no drama here. It's just all positive. Yes, well, that's the way I'd like to keep it anyway. Thank you. So that's good. All right, back to the, the last little bit. I'm nearly, I'm nearly finished here too. So you don't have to be bored any longer. 
well not broad I shouldn't say that you don't have to be uh, waiting to get to a point where you might be able to ex uh, I'm just trying to share you can see what I'm sharing just trying to oh, that's right it was this one well actually I, you need to know this one first so the redox potential so it's the oxygen reduction potential is measured in E and E is a measure of the affinity of a substance for electrons. So there's a few different E's that they put in with that to try and describe what's happening in redox potential at the moment, at given moment. So the redox potential is the measure relative to hydrogen. So that's why it's pH dependent because you know your H plus is your hydrogen and that's um, pH is the negative logarithm of hydrogen. And a positive redox potential equals higher affinity for electrons than does hydrogen, would accept electrons from hydrogen. And a negative redox potential equals lower affinity for electrons than that does of hydrogen. So it would donate electrons. That's very, I'll explain this in a sec with a chart. So NADH is a strong reducing agent versus redox potential. Uh, NA, nic, uh, nicotine, aline, di hydrogen A's is the reducing agent that's uh, in the form that's with your metabolisms and breaking down so anyway oxygen is a strong oxidizing agent which is a has a very good positive reduction potential in other words it has a tendency to accept electrons and reduce them heavily like with another a thing which you can relate to is iron so if you get iron filings you see steel and it's just normal. You pull it out and put it into the oxygen and steel it all of a sudden, it starts to get that rusty look on top of it. That's because the Fe iron has started to accept oxygen electrons and it started to break it down in the process. So the microbes have, there we go. I'll explain it a bit better with the chart. So the microbes have done their thing and they've started to reduce it because for microbes, they need an electron acceptor an electron donor and then their minerals to get them to and bomb and then they can do their activity so actually i've got another chart i brought up for that so nitrosomus is the ammonification bacteria that changes ammonia into nitrate so the nitrosomus microbe will be sitting there and it'll come in contact with ammonia and then it will go and use the electron acceptor as oxygen and do it for its transformation process, its end result will be nitrate. That's how uh, the redox potential happens. So this has been reduced, this element from ammonia into nitrate. And then if you go one step further, you'd say nitrobacter is the, is the microbe that changes nitrite into nitrate. So after nitrosomus has done its thing and transformed ammonia into nitrite, Nitrobacter will convert nitrite into nitrate. And remember, plants want two elements for their nitrogen, and one of them is nitrate, and the other one's ammonium. So NO3 is the exact form that the root's looking to exchange. So if you've got these microbes in there with this process happening, this reduction process, it's perfect for the biology of your plant's roots. This is a general chart that explains it all in full detail. Uh, energy up here is gained from oxygen. So oxygen is really high on the reduction capacity, where if you go to the opposite end of the scale, you've got your H plus ion, which it ends up with. Over here is your measurements of your electron voltages. So you've got your EO. That's one measurement of your voltages here. You can see it. And then the second measurement is your PE, which is the other form of the measurement of the voltages. And the PE is more related to what's happening at that given time because it'll tell you your pluses and your minuses. So it'll go into the positives for all of these oxygen dependent reactions and it'll go into the negatives for all of these anoxygen or aerobic anaerobic reactions. So it's um, it shows you you know for generally you want a positive PE for your reductions to happen for your growing in your medical cannabis uh, this will this will be technical over here Ion exchange map is that all for that one 
I could have more on this. Uh, which ones haven't I been through this one, is it? I like this. This is a little this is a little um, chart that shows you how at the start the energy will start out really high and then as it goes it gets microbes interact and exchange microbes interact it loses it gets broken down it goes through and its energy is reduced as it goes through that's a bit of a schematic on um, the reduction potential of electrons very easy to understand just to summarize for cations oh it's blurry oh anyway cations and anions is a you can generally uh, learn which ones are a cation and an anion by their way that they're described. Like if something ends in IUM or IDE, sorry, like IUM, for instance, that's a cation. Because see up here we've got lithium, potassium, hydrogen, magnesium, calcium. They're all the pluses. So that's just a general rule. It's just easy to remember. And over here you've got the ICs, the end in IC, so ferric, cupric, remember cupric is the way plants accept their copper in cupric form. Um, and then down here for your anions, there's a few different ways you can remember that, is the ides and the eights. So IDE, if it ends in ide, sulfide, chloride, fluoride, those things, they're anions with the negative and with the eights, ATE at the end. So chlorate, sulfate, nitrate, phosphate, silicate. So those are the ones with the negative charges. So that's just a, a general way you can you know for in future. All right, I want to increase my cation exchange. So what should I try and do for that? I want elements with the positive interactions. So you can sort of relate back to this chart. And that's all for that one too. Getting to the end, guys and girls, is it good? Uh, production potential is over here. Maybe I should, I'll just see if there's any questions, just in case. Just in case. Now I can come back to this chart. Uh, oops, we go up here. This is my, my love to the community. You see, all the diggers were found. <laughs> yes. Good one. Thank you for the support, Stony Creek. Uh, what things going on? Uh, 420 bin. Nice to see you, 420 bin. Oh, is there some? Anyway, I just saw that Nexus was...
Hello. Sorry, I'm back. That was very, very, very strange. For some reason, my I'm having problems with a few members in the community. And can, can, can I just say quietly that it's not going too well? These couple of people have really caused dramas and there's no need to cause dramas, making stories, all sorts. I don't really talk about this, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is related. Please be careful. I'm not into drama and I don't cause drama. It's just stupid. It's childish. We did that at school. Fair income. And I reckon this is highly related to that. Yep. This is really strange. Not impressed. I don't really want to name names at this stage. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It was all just flowing really well. And then all of a sudden, um, yeah, internet just dropped. I realised I was talking to myself after there for a while. Sorry about that. It's, um, I'm just trying to read through these messages to make sure there's no drama in there. It's just people will understand more at 420. It's sort of like as if, um, really, really. Why are they doing this? It says Jeff. Good question, mate. Exactly. Sabotage. Yes. It's um, to the point now. This is so wrong. Yes, I agree. Uh, someone suggested to me to get the police involved because if they're sabotaging me and things are not going good, I've done nothing wrong here. I'm the nice person. I'm just trying to sit back. I've got proof of exactly what I've done because I keep paper trails. So do they. So um, the few things that have, are happening aren't nice. It's all about plants, mate, soil and microbes. Why do people want to try and be negative cause other people problems it's just yes it's obvious just move on just some people they got childish mentalities and they can't help themselves that's about the best i can say uh like grow up i don't know what else to blimmin', blimmin' say it's just ridiculous so, yeah, I think something just happened because of my, sorry about that. Whoever is messing with you can fly a kite. Yes. Well, I'm sick of being getting messed with, mate. These idiots, are, there's no need for it. There's Mick S is one of the persons doing it, and he's, it's just creating all sorts of dramas that aren't needed. There's no need for drama. I'm here to do a show to say about plant science plant soil science and microbes related to medical cannabis. And if other people are trying to cause harm and problems to me, it's not on. I don't accept it. And I'm going to name this and we're going to this. I'm just going to name it and then get on because I don't go on about drama. It's ridiculous. Hey, brother, how you going, mate? Nice to see you. Uh, whoever is messing with you can go fly a kite. Well, it's It's ridiculous. This once in a farm, I think it's going to get escalated. So I'll be have to probably put out a video to explain the um, what's going on. But it's just stupid. It's drama. It's, I don't. Yep, block and move forward. That's exactly what. That's that's the go. So that's the go. Just have to block, move forward. Yep, because people online are different to what they are in real life. Like anybody can hide behind anything in real line. You know, people can do whatever they want. So, that's but in real life, nope. Anyway, I don't want to go on about this sort of reckless end of the show today. It's a bit of a shame, to be honest. Anyway, at least I got you back and I could just I hope you had a good show. I don't think there's any questions. If you've got any questions, uh, you're welcome to put them. Uh, yeah. Maybe they don't want the community to be educated. <laughs> That's exactly right, mate. It's it's ridiculous. Can't people put be adult enough to put things aside 
to know what's going on, to know, oh, no, some people just want Australia to be dumb. They want Australia to, yeah, just to be stupid like their actions. Um, it's it's childish. There's no, it's just, it's just child and that other word for it. It's ridiculous. I'm an adult, so I can easily get over that rot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and if it continues, I'll let you all know next week the people involved. So you can all be careful as well because there's just no need for it again. What a shame. And I was halfway through that radox discussion too, so I don't know where I got to. Uh, anyway, I'm not here for drama again. This is a plant source science show. This isn't a show about uh, fools or childish people that are doing, trying to rally up the troops to try and um, do wrong or to cause harm. It's strange. So all I can say to those people, I know they're listening because it's a big drama thing, is please, I'm trying to be friends with everybody. I'd like to be friends with you as well. So drop the axe. Communication is the key. You don't go behind people's backs and try and do things. You communicate and find out answers. Then people can move forward in a normal debating way. Nah, they just do it the easy way. We're just going blah, blah, blah. Right up. And it's not about what I'm about. I'm about moving forward peacefully. So, yes, don't sink to the lower level. It's sad, to be honest. That's the good word for it. It's sad. There's just no need for it, mates. Jesus. We're all supposed to be mates. Like, we're all supposed to be. This is, and it's the drama, I can tell you, is only in Australia. So for all you overseas folk, thank you for being normal. Uh the, overseas, the people in Australia are just, some folk are weird, mate, and they just um, want to other people to try and think like them in their weird ways. So they'll try and exaggerate truths to the mega max to get people on side. It's, um, we can all exaggerate things and be like we used to do at school to try and rally up people. The truths will come out in the end, fellas. There's no need to do all ridiculous things. I've got, like I said, good video. I've got good uh, photos and I've got a paper trail. So I can prove everything that I've said and I haven't lied to anybody. That's all I want to say about it. I don't like drama. It's See see what we've caused here this last five or ten minutes. It's been wasteful with time and effort when we were discussing how to improve plant genetics and how to get the best out of our cannabis, medical cannabis. So for those people, that's what you bring. You bring the community down. My community that I'm trying to create doesn't involve you. So you aren't, you're just not welcome, mate. I'm sorry. There's no need for those types of negative things. Put, your good, put all that energy into creating good. Put all that energy into getting counselling or psychology help. Put all that energy into something, to studying. Nah, we'd rather just mess with people. Well, okay. It's nothing to do with me. I'm going to get over it. So yes, you need to stop this bullshit. I need to stop this bullshit too. Sorry about everybody for going on. G'day, John420. How are you? Sorry, mate. You, John, you come right in at the end when the cannabis community in Australia is particular members are turning against me and creating havoc and they drop my internet connection out. So if things escalate, I'll be... I name one person this week if things escalate, I'll just be telling the whole story next week and what's going on. I don't really want to do that because I don't like starting or causing or being involved in drama. It's childish. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm an adult. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to move on. Thanks to those people for wrecking the end of the show. But in general, I thought it was a good show because I got all the points. I hopefully all my CEC and those folk who are into growing their fine medical cannabis can get the best out of it and they can use those numbers and those slides to proliferate and bring the best to their, their girls. I think they just need to get a life. That's exactly right, mate. That's what I said. If they can put the energy into doing studies or something else like that, it'll be much more beneficial to them. But no, they'd rather try and Remember, too, they don't realise that online these days creates paper trails. So in the right uh, 
not hackers, what are these words called? In the right IT people, they can look at these paper trails. So basically, good luck to them. They've, they're a bit kind of silly in a way. But anyway, that's what childish techniques bring to people. What's martial artist said? He's always a nice bloke. It's good to know what is happening. It's not shit talking. Many feel about it is not welcome, just but shining light on dark is important to make all aware. Yeah, I'll be shining some light next week. I'll tell you if things um, escalate like this. The last week's been ridiculous, peoples. It's just been crazy. There's just no need for it. I'm trying to, anyway, thanks for the nice words, people, and I appreciate your, um, your good works and stuff. So keep up the good work in the community. Nice one. To, sorry, in the community that is involved in this show, I should say, not in the Australian community, because the Australian community is a few bad apples in the, in the, in the bag and, um, yeah, whatever. I'm not involved in that. I'll just make it clear. I'm involved in a community where they're positive people, where everybody gets along. No one talks bad about each other because we all have our disadvantages. We all have our negative sides. So if you want to be involved in that community, in that what I just described, you're more than welcome here. And you'll be highlighted and you'll be a moderator. And so just want to make it clear. I should go in probably and adjust all that. Make the moderators moderator as a, yep. So for those couple in there that I haven't, Done. There you go. These are moderators now. Just to save any future, because I, I like the people that have been coming in here. So the, the folk that see themselves as moderators, that means that they're accepted in this community by myself and they're nice, nice folk as a standard. Yep. So I'm just going to cruise up the list here and just make the folk that are um, always. Just not always on side, but just helpful and normal is what I would see. So thanks to those. I just went and did that. Uh, full moon. Full moon. The nutters go off. That is, that's a good point. I've heard that too. And does that mean that we've got a full It means it must be. I'll tell you what, it's more than full moon. We've got one of those um, super moons hanging over me at the moment, Jeff. <laughs> Mate. Oh. I'll need all the help I can get. Dave, so true. Jeff, yep. Yes. Thanks for your kind words, people. It's appreciated. Because that's all I really do. I seem to try. Now I'm going to get back to studies again. You know, I'm just, just trying. I'm trying not to create problems for others because I know every person has their own problem and disadvantage. Why should you want to try and proliferate that and bring that person down? What sort of person does it make you? Does it make you better than them? It's just, there's no, two wrongs don't make a right. Some people are raised differently. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for your nice words. Ah, uh, uh, uh. good on you, Bev. Uh, good day, Bev. He's smiling right now. Good on you. Yeah, I know, mate. You're right. You're right, Bev. But um, it's just a shame that they're... I just don't want to be involved with those types of folk, but they seem to be trying to be involved with me, you know, like the show, like my internet connection got taken down for some reason. I'll have to investigate that. It's just um, ridiculousness is a good word. <laughs> yeah. There is always room... Yes, always room to bury the hatchet and resolve issues. There's a big person to pass, takes a big person to pass that olive branch. Yes, it does. And that's where I am. I can forget and forgive people to move on. But no, people want to rally up people just because of an incident. And um, yeah, anyway, looks like I might be explaining the whole incident to you next week. I might have to have a separate stream where I'll go and stream exactly what happened, showing all those details, showing all the video and the, the photos that I have with all of the bank proof of all that sort of stuff, just um, to get my point across. So then the average Joe can make up their decision. Oh, is that true? Oh, 
Hang on. Well, that totally doesn't make sense. If you do the numbers, oh, okay, and all this sort of stuff. Just people, grow up people, some people. Thanks for all those who are nice, like most of the folk here. Thank you. Yes, drama ruins your high. Yes, there's no need for it. We've all got our negatives in life. There's, we really, really have. Everyone's life is hard. Even those rich folk or those folk that have gifted, they've also got problems. We've also got internal health issues with our bodies, let alone mental issues like this is trying to create. So there's all sorts of crazy things. There's no need for that. It's everything's too, life's too short. Invest your time into good positive things and you'll see the outcome will be good and positive. If you stick all this time around this, what can you expect about just doing negative things to calm haunt? Oh, I'm going to get back at that person. Well, I can't actually in a way I can't wait to tell you what it is because you'll laugh when you find out what it is you go what it blew up because of that <laughs> yeah it's so juvenile is a good word for it yes uncalled you'll rise above yeah I've already risen above mate because it's pathetic and I don't deal down to pathetics or childish acts or like I'm a really really uh, I don't want to go into detail Actually, I don't want to say that. I can handle myself well. So I'm not really worried. These immature couple of folk have need the help, not me. So thanks for the nice words. I don't rise above, but I think they need the help, mate. Like Mick S, he needs some help. And there's another couple of people getting involved. They need the help. Um, so I feel a bit sorry for them. I know everything's going to be fine because of... Well, the, what's going on? <laughs> but I just feel sorry for them in a way. Yeah. Anyway, one and a half hours. And the last 30 minutes was just going on about negative drama. We've got nowhere. See how drama just causes absolutely nothing? It didn't fix anything. It didn't shine a light on anything. All it did was make it realise that one particular person in general is making causing a lot of problems. So, um, yeah. Crazy, crazy talk it is. <laughs> That's what's coming out of this person's mouth. Crazy talk. It's, an, it's the, it's a major factor. Nothing would grow without iron exchange. Yes. That's it. Back to the point. Good on you, Kemet. Thanks, mate. He was going off the, off the, off the topic then. Having people that, um, yeah, sorry. Yes, that's right. It does. You're right, Kemet. Hey, big boy, Kush, how you going? We need to learn and come to... We do. This is the thing. Do you know a big boy, Kush, like in the States? Um, it's. I've been involved in the States for quite a few years and there's a good community there. Uh, and I tried to create something like that in Australia and it's just struggling. People are... Um, they just want to keep their education level low they want to talk about each other and cause drama. And that's the standard that's going to be kept in the circle that I'm not involved in. Big boy Kush, I'm an Osbro. Oh, sorry. I was thinking of someone else. Another, oh, that's um, the bloke mate in California. What's his name? Something, oh, sorry, mate. Uh, anyway, I'm just, you just come in the backside of a me explaining the eggs, rotten eggs in the carton of eggs that we have in Australia. Unfortunately, they're trying to get me involved and I'm not, I don't want anything to do with them. And if it keeps continuing, I'll be have to explain the whole story. It's just silly, waste of time. Done. Yep. Like the May says, done. <laughs> I'm done too. It's stupid. All it does is cause problems. Just keep moving. Just keep what doing you. Yeah, that's right, mate. So, all right, well, just have, sorry, I'm really sorry to end uh, today's on such a downer, but, yeah, that blame, I suppose you, I'm, I'm, I'm involved, but you can blame the rotten eggs in the, in the carton. I'm trying. They must roll on CC or up. The show must roll, roll on or up. Yeah. Oh, it'll be fine, mate. The show's... The show will roll on. 
and everybody will roll up with their smokes too because I'll be here next week. I'll be doing the same thing, uh, talking about plant, soil, science and microbiology and hopefully I won't be discussing drama because it, that's just what it is. It's a waste of drama. It's ridiculous. All good. I'll tune in next week. I, I'm just reading the comments at the same time. Yeah, so I, I do apologise to everybody because this isn't what I'm about. I don't like to be involved in drama because it's a time waster. Uh, we've all got busy lives and let's put our energy into positive things that can get us what we want, our, achieve our dreams and get our hobbies happening. It's So I just apologise to everybody. I'm sorry. Um, those people hopefully won't be involved in here. That's why I've put the change the subscriber settings the chat settings to those folk who are only in here, only been subscribed for the last blah, blah, because that's when the event happened. It only happened like a week ago. Or I think it was only yeah, just over a week ago. It, so it's that's what I've changed. So I'm trying to keep the chat in here normal and nice in the way I want to roll forward. Polite, happy, respectful. I'm not doing it, Aussie. It's all good. Yeah, well, it feels like it. You know, I just, I'm, it takes two to tango, you know. So, anyway, I wish them help for them, for the persons that are going to complain today. And when my name's mentioned about anybody today in the next week on YouTube, I hope those people can get help because they need it. Because I know I've done the right thing. I can hold my head very high. Nothing but loyalty here, brother. Yeah, thanks, boy, boy, Kush. But it's, not a, it's. I don't. I don't want to pull sides or anything like that. I just want a nice community, mate. Like we can. We've all got our problems. Like there's no need to proliferate on one person's problem. Put that person down more. If anything, you should be helping. So it's. Yeah. Good luck to them, and I hope they can get some help. So yeah, thanks. I'll be. I'll be doing this again next week. There's no title this week today this was recommended from someone else they suggested last week that they wanted to find out more about this today um i'll just put the slide up again there you go so that's what it was from today so i can't remember who it was but yeah i got the point across in the start i'm glad this didn't happen at the start at least it happened at the end you know so it's there's no problems. Just have to try and life's just hard, you know. There's all sorts of negatives and positives. You can be like Happy Gilmore and try and reach for the positives all the time, or you can be like these folk and just go around in circles with negatives. I choose the positives. I choose to move on. I choose to be happy and learn more things. Do more experiments in medical cannabis and chat with you guys and hopefully shed some light on your questions. So next week is an open discussion so if you've got any questions we can discuss them more this week like poops had some at the start and then i think someone blim and blocked him um so yeah let's just try and roll on roll on roll up be merry put the negatives behind hope the kids can grow up and get help that they the help they need righto I thanks everybody for trying. I appreciate your nice words and your support. And uh, I'll speak to you more lightly in seven days' time when we do an open show. So thanks, everybody. Happy growing, happy breeding, and good health to you all. Bye-bye.